Hey guys, welcome back to Shifting the Gear. It's Fads and Polar. Welcome back, guys. Today we've got for you a Mazda CX-5 2.2 turbo diesel. Yeah, this is the Max Sport. So much power behind it, eh, Polar? Oh, so much power. Uh, it's it. actually pretty talky. I'm not going to lie. I like it. It's actually doing all right. It's still good. It's still good. Yeah. Now, if you're wondering why we're doing it in the car, guys, it's actually got it's some... It's a hurricane. <laughs> probably exaggerating a little bit, but the weather's not on our side today. But we're going to do our best, and we're going to get into it. And yeah, thanks again for watching and just subscribing. Yeah, so guys, just remember, yeah. if you guys can help us out, we're trying to hit a thousand subs. A thousand subs, guys. That's what we're aiming for. All right. If you guys can help us out, hit like, share, all of the above or down below, whichever it is. Whatever you can do, guys. Cheers. Right. Let's thanks, get guys. All right, guys, here we are. Mazda CX-5 Max Sport. Let's go over the outside. First thing, you got your shadow chrome 17-inch alloy wheels. Let's come a bit closer. Very dirty right now. Uh, moving to the front. Um, very similar theme going through that the whole car. You've got that kind of uh, silver kind of chrome finish across. And when we show you the interior, you will see that a lot as well. Big, oh. massive, massive <laughs> Mazda logo over there. I love and, the honeycomb grill. And the massive grill as well. It's massive. I don't know what uh, everyone's been giving shit to BMW about their massive grills, but have a look at this. No one mentions anything about the Mazdas. I think this is actually bigger than the, <laughs> the ones they have, don't you? It's pretty big. Yeah. Headlights are nice and sleek. Got the white LEDs, Xenons. You've got a very kind of definitive line coming across to the front. It gives it a bit more like a beak. Look, what do you think? Yeah, you can see it just drops it's straight like down. Nice I'm, and big. I'm just going to show them a bit closer. That's like what a... Paul is talking about. See the lines? You basically see yeah. across here. There you go. Both sides, if you can see. That's kind of it. just pull towards the front. <laughs> Those massive fog lights. They're actually <laughs> hidden if you actually look at it. Stand up yeah. and you actually look at it from this angle, you can't see it. You them. can't see it. <laughs> you know, body lines coming through, kind of disappears as, by the time you get to the back end. And then reappears up here. Very simple looking CX-5 shape. This looks like the same CX-5 from the side that from 10 years ago, in my opinion. They all look very similar here. Now, this will, um, you will notice as well when you're test driving the car, this, ape, this, this um, rear quarter panel is very, very small. You don't get much visibility. I think they could have, look, there's not much room there as well. No, it's, it's not, not massive. Yeah. In the back, being an all wheel drive, so active. Um, big Mazda logo too. Power lights are nice and simple. I like, I like the design on them. I actually do. Yeah, they're cool. It's going to come a bit closer. Rear sensors. No. Oh, look at that. Manual lift, Polar. What? Pretty decent boost space. They've got your curtain. Oh, they've got that style where it kind of clips into the top. Oh, okay, sure, so that. Is it a full size spare? No, it's not. It's a bigger wheel, but it's not a uh, same alloy wheel. Temporary tire. Seats fold 40, 40, 20. That's one side. It's all in the right. Two. Coming around the rear end here. Yeah, what do you think? We always like to test myself out because I'm not too big <laughs> sitting in the back seat here, but uh, it's very spacious. Air vents, dedicated air vents, something to. Um, Note for the point out. One thing that they're probably missing is like USBs. I was gonna say that that's all missing. Most cars these days, give you, especially new cars, give you USBs in the back. How's your head? Pretty basic. Headroom. Headroom's great. Yeah. Not bad. Yeah, a lot of room. I don't know if it's gonna be compromised much if it's a big sunroof or something, but overall right now it's okay. One thing I gotta point out is it's kind of almost pointless. Cup holders, what is this thing? How does that work with this one? <laughs> <laughs> no keyless entry, but it is um, push button start. So next model up, the touring yeah, will there, there'll be a little button that you yeah. just press, I believe. Yeah, touring model, that's yeah. where you have the keyless yeah. entry system as well. So yeah, that's, cool. that's the outside of the car, guys. <laughs>。yeah, they are. What do you think? They're actually pretty comfy. Yeah, they are. So they hug you slightly, not too much. Leather steering wheel, Paula, your favorite. I know how much you love leather steering wheels, and it's quite <laughs> quite a decent size. And as you see, you know, you got your basics, volume, training your tracks, Bluetooth, and then if you come here, you've got all the safety that's features the, as that's well. That's adaptive cruise control. Just um, right there for you. There, yeah. So yeah. over here, you've got your radio controls, and then you've got, of course, your speedo just there for you. It is digital as well. 
Uh, to the right side yeah. uh, is completely digital, yes. Yeah, let's see. I'm revving. Oh no. Hey, it's a diesel. You can't really hear it. <laughs> For a diesel, it's not too bad in the cabin space. Now, automatic wipers are standard. Automatic lights. Oh, pretty cool. Automatic lights as well. Yeah, what I'm do just, you think of the actual system itself? Yeah, I was playing around with it before. You've got your navigation as well. But the thing is with, with Mazda, you've got a USB you know, SD card you have to actually put in. You've got a little SD card slot that you have to put in to record. That SD card, you I'm can't actually way. have the navigation. Yeah, and so it's a bit, a bit odd that it, they make it like that. But it's also got Apple CarPlay and Android Auto system. Yeah, it does. So if you actually go into the apps, applications, and then, so yeah, Android Auto, Apple CarPlay. The screen's not big. Good is that 6.5, 7 maybe? Look, Mazdas in general are very aesthetically pleasing in my opinion. Very. But this particular screen, the whole design where it just pops out and away, it just seems out of place. It just feels like something sticking out yeah, of the dash. It, <laughs> it does. But in saying that, we got the soft touch. Yeah, soft touch. It is well built. It's well put together. Yeah. Oh, not bad. Stitching. No... I like the stitching color as well. It matches in. And then of course, as you can see, around the air vents, we have your aircon system. It's got that stylish silver trimming that goes around. Well, on that note, actual feds, um, when I had I was driving this car earlier and I had the aircon on full blast. It actually gets a lot of condensation around these edges here and on it the silver bit. It actually feels cold too. Yeah, I don't know if you, you can't pretty you can't pretty much see, but it actually gets a bit wet. Um, if you actually do have the aircon running a while, so I don't know if that's like a design flaw or affect anything. Or, but yeah. Um, yeah, it's a quick and thing now to just note. Back to the unit system here itself. Just yeah. gonna go back to the. I just want to check out the camera. You know, I love my camera. So, it's so being the Max Sport, you've only got the reverse camera and is it just the. Oh, it doesn't rear actually sensors. have the It doesn't actually. The guidelines don't move. Oh, that's yeah, You so know, I usually have the guidelines moving. Oh, it's a quick. Oh, it doesn't have it. But it's got, the, it's got the reverse sensors and there with the automatic braking as well. Not too bad. Overall, what it is. So it does have automatic emergency braking. Yeah. So if you, okay, so it has reverse braking yeah, and so front braking. It's got that itself. Now also with this system here, if you were to go the below model, you don't actually get navigation. So that the Neo, is that what so it is? No, the Max. Max, okay. So you won't actually get- Navigation. Inboard navigation into it. Yeah. So you would have to go, of course, to the Max Sport, which we're driving now, yeah. to actually get inboard navigation. But you still got Apple CarPlay on the base. I, I don't remember the last time I used the inbuilt GPS on a car, no, honestly. I just plug it in and, and just go, unless you don't have a smartphone, then yeah. maybe you need it. <laughs> Look, if you're out in the country, I can understand, but otherwise, Apple CarPlay is the way to go, in my opinion. Oh, yeah. Push the start, start. Yeah. yeah. And it's got the silver trim around here as well. Yeah, Not bad. I think that's, yeah, it's kind of a going theme around the whole car. It's just everywhere you can see it, yeah. even around the speedos itself, it's all, yeah. it's all got that silver trimming. Here or here. Yeah, you see it all, everywhere. So what do you think about the controls here? Not bad. I yep. don't mind it, but that controls, of course, the info system. It reminds remember. me of the BMW iDrive. It's like almost identical to the way how it handles and the way it moves. And it feels it's like a little shift knob. Yeah, it is. It's a, now, as you can see, it's still got the volume. Yeah. There, so it's still old school there for you. Yeah. And then it has all your quick selections so you can throw out the so system. Gearing. Oh, shit. No, that's for your shifter. Oh, okay. <laughs> Seems to have. Oh, let's put that back. Just put it back full. Yeah. <laughs> Electric handbrake and yeah. it's got auto hold as well, which is good. Everyone yeah. needs to hold it Now, you got the piano finish. What do you think, Paula? Yeah, that's a luxury kind of feel to it. Not bad. And then, of course, aircon system. Pretty basic. Dual aircon, both sides. You can select it. It is climatized as well. Fan speed, standard. So, pretty much basic. Just there for you as well. It presents nicely inside. It's nothing um, insane. No sunroof, just a normal. Kind of SUV. Sunroof, you have to get to the GT model. It's a bit, no, yeah. All right. Leather seats, if you were looking... Well, another thing, if you were looking to go leather, you got two models, right? Yeah. One is actually what we call Mastec leather. So it's like okay. synthetic leather itself. And that's on the Touring. And then, of course, if you get to the GT, you can actually get full leather seats. If you will go to that itself. Awesome. Now, being this model as well, itself, as you can tell, overall, it doesn't have electric seats. No, it's just manual seat controls. Manual seat goes. With the controls again, but again, once you go the higher specs itself, that's when you start getting extra features as well into it all. All right, friends. Well, thanks for showing us inside. No, appreciate it. Thanks, guys. All right, guys, let's get into it. We're gonna take it for a spin. Paul's gonna show us how we drift this. No, no, yeah. no uh, drift today. No drifting today. I have been driving this car all day today, and it actually have a bit of having a bit. 
having a bit of fun in it. And um, it's what, 140 kilowatts? Yeah, well, uh, 100, which is not too bad. Yeah, and the RPM range I think starts from about 4,000. So compared to the petrol 2.5, it's also 140 kilowatts, but it's a lot higher RPM. About 6,000 yeah, 6, to its all. Yeah. They, they also, in this variant, they do come with the two liter as well. Yeah. Which after just about 100. Kilowatts. Me personally, after driving these cars, or this car in particular, I would probably either, most likely get the diesel or petrol 2.5. I wouldn't get the 2 litre, I don't know, I just feel like it wouldn't be enough power. And this is an all-wheel drive as well, Paula. Yeah, I, I, can, I can see it, the way it's handling in the rain. So I can see you take the corners quite quick. <laughs> It is uh, raining. Paula's, um, I think, really trying to drift this car. No, just you know what? You got to give it a good try, guys. Let's so the viewers can actually tell how these cars go. The viewers or yourself? <laughs> <laughs> no, it drives really. I'm actually enjoying it though. Like it's, it's got a bit of torque, and a bit of fun. It drives pretty nicely. The steering is nice and soft. I can see it's a quite, it's quite decent size as well. The steering yeah. wheel, leather you mentioned as well. Yeah, leather steering wheel. It's got great visibility too. Apart from the rear quarter panels on either side. That's part, what I was gonna say. Yeah, everything. They're probably, else. Yeah, they're probably the only part of it that will let down the visibility. But overall, great visibility, especially um, around the front driver's side and passenger side. This is not too bad. Even the room, in it, it's, it's actually comfortable here in the front. And the seats, the seats are as well. Seats are comfy. I'm not. We're not getting much body roll, are we? And I'm throwing this thing around like it's a sports car. Yeah, it's gripping quite well. It's gripping well. And it is wet too, so it is very wet, guys. I think this is a pretty good test drive when you're actually testing it yeah. in the wet. Yeah, it's good to try it out there, especially if it's got something that's all wheel drive. You can kind of hand see that just how well it handles. Now you even got the trip trying it with yeah, the paddle shifts. Paddle shifters. I was just downshifting before. And now the funny thing is, Paul, you know, in the base model. You yeah. can actually get it in manual. Oh, okay. Yeah, in the base, but it's a two liter. Two liter manual, okay. Yeah. That's interesting. I didn't know they still made manuals. They do, they still make manuals. How funny is that? Oh, uh, yeah, it'll get it. It's, it's pretty cool, especially for those enthusiasts and all people die hard manual fans. But I've got to say, I probably wouldn't go for the manual option. Nah. Would you? Not if it's an everyday drive. I think I prefer what we've got right now. We've either got the paddle shifts or just the automatic system. Yeah, I'm, I'm used to the paddle shifters. Um, if I was even to buy it, you know, particularly sports cars these days, I know nothing can beat the, the autos and I mean, really. And then you enjoy it. But also with this, it's about 5.7 combined in the fuel consumption. Yeah. Not bad. Yeah, I was just looking at the averages, 5.7. It's pretty Look, good. I always feel like the, you know the stats they put there is always a bit ambitious so but in general anything close to five is really really good you can't complain yeah no especially with right now with the fuel prices <laughs> yeah i don't know what's going around the world but here in australia especially sydney fuels off its head <laughs> what is it over two liters two dollars a liter fuel? yeah over two dollars a liter it's crazy diesel's a bit cheaper right? yeah all, all right. right so paula what do you reckon overall look I think it's a great family car. Now, for the price range, do I think it's the best thing you can get? A bit possibly, of a, oh, possibly not, no. A bit I, of a price. Yeah, a bit of a price. It is well put together, it does the job. I don't think I'd complain if once I actually had the car. Japanese car, so it's, yeah. it's worth every dollar to be honest with you. But you can get cheaper um, competitors out there that will do the job as well. The quality? With the quality, yeah. Always That's cheaper, but then you gotta remember quality. Jap yeah. Japs is That's true. So one thing as well, a lot of people, well, not a lot of people, some people seem to forget is when you buy a car that's generally more expensive because of the build or because it's a better quality car, it's always worth more down the road. So you're not, you're just looking at that initial price difference. But when you think about selling it in the future, you've got to realize that that's always going to be a bit worth a bit that's more true. too. Yeah. Now in saying that, yeah. rating time shifted to you. Oh, look, what do you give it? Overall, just from the experience that I've had as a say, family car, I'd probably give it an eight. I think I'm on the same page. I think I'm happy with it. I'd probably give it an 8 out of 10 as a shift into gear score. I'm happy with it all overall. Yeah. It's not a bad built car. For, no, a, for, a, for a medium sized SUV, mm -hmm. for an everyday drive, for yeah. a family car, it's pretty decent. It's I pretty agree. decent. I agree. Yeah, we're 8. We're happy with it. Oh, well, on that, that. That's it, guys. Um, Don't forget to subscribe. And, like, uh, like, share, and thousand subs really helps hit, us. Try to hit a thousand, that's it. A thousand. Come on, guys. Follow a drift if you get a thousand. If we do a thousand, we'll do a drift special in the new SRG car. Which should we do a reveal or should we just tell them what it is? I think we should do a reveal. Yeah, okay. We'll so we've got an exciting car. All I'm going to say it's a V8 um, and it's a lot of fun to drive. So we're going to be, we'll do a special on that one if we 
hit a thousand subs. So stay tuned and we'll bring it to you soon. All right, guys. Cheers. Yeah. See you guys.